Hey guys, Amy here with Sublimation and More and Hellbound Company. And in this quick video tutorial, I'm just going to go over showing you how to make these raggy patches for hats or bags or whatever um, using the no sew method. Um, so you don't have to have a sewing machine or sewing machine skills, which I do not have. Um, so that's kind of why I, I search for the best method to do this without having to have a sewing machine or um, any sewing skills. So here's what the hat looks like. You can use, um, you know, you, you can use any polyester material that you find. So if you buy any of the Fox Burlap pillow covers or any of the Fox Burlap items from Coney Island Transfer and you have mess ups, save that material because you can cut it up and use it for these raggy patches. Same goes for the linen items that I sell on my website over at hellbound.com. So, but if you don't have any of those items and you're looking to get started right away, there is this linen material that's kind of like a burlap-y, 100% uh, polyester you can get from Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna show you right now where to go get that material over at Hobby Lobby. Let's go there now. Okay, I'm at the Hobby Lobby. And um, thanks for the tip, Ashley Dodd, on where to find the linen material. It's going to be over here with the, um, with like the furniture fabric. <clears throat> right now they're having a 30% off. And here is the material that we got, which is a, as you can see, it's like the linen material that we get that I even sell in my tote bags, but it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit shade darker. So even without the 30% off, if it's not on sale, you can get it for 40%. Um, and this is $15.99 and here is the name. It's called the New Linen, Dynasty New Linen, and it is 100% poly. So this is gonna be perfect to print on. And again, here's the color. Okay guys, you better go get some before it runs out. Okay, so now that you know where to find the material over at Hobby Lobby, <clears throat> now we're gonna want to, you're gonna come up with your designs, and and um, and we're going to sub that next. So I've already came up with my little Texas design. So I'm gonna go ahead and sub it. I've printed it out. And I'm just going to place it right there in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be fraying it afterwards. And we want to press this at 400 degrees for 60 seconds, light pressure. And we're just gonna go ahead and let that cook and then we'll be right back. All right, we're all done pressing. And that looks great. Okay, so, um, so that came out really good. Hopefully y'all can see that. I mean, I, there you go, a little light. All right, so next what we want to do is we want to fray it around. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of border. I'm just gonna cut it. Around in the same shape as Texas. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so next we want to, next we want to go ahead and start fraying it. Okay, so I'm over here at my other press and kind of converted it into a workstation. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So you just want to kind of pick at the threads. Sometimes I do it on the back because they work better. And we're just going to fray it all the way around. You gotta do it to pick up the threads. And 
how much fray you get is going to be up to you on how much you want on there. So that this doesn't make take up a lot of time in the video, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward this part now. Okay, so I'm done fraying, and, um, and I know I fast-forwarded through the video, so you can't really get a general idea of the time frame it takes. It probably took me about um, five minutes, maybe a little more, to fray this patch. And um, I, I'm going to tell you on shapes like this that are going in different directions, the thread is going to be a little harder to fray versus just a straight round or square patch. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to get all as much excess thread as I can off so it looks even somewhat. want it to look perfectly even because then it doesn't it kind of takes away from the raggy look So I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Just try to get as much as of the excess off as you can. Okay, so next what we want to do is in order to keep it from not fraying, which is what most people why most people will um, put a stitch around it is to keep the material from fraying. I found something that we can use instead which is called no fray. Now they do have different variations of this stuff. 
um, I mean by different manufacturers so um, but I got this at Hobby Lobby it's by Dritz and it's called fray check so it just stops fraying on the fabric <coughs> you just want to put a little dab a little bit around the edges and I can tell you that it's going to make it look like it changes the fabric color but when it dries it's it's fine All right, so we're gonna do that now. I'm just getting all the extra thread off. Just put a dab all the way around. Pretty much at the edge of where the fraying is. And again, you don't need a lot. All right, now they recommend that you let it dry for 24 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and then we're gonna let it dry and then we'll be back to press it. Okay, the fabric's dry and here's a little quick, a little quick tip to dry it even faster. Just take your patch Put it on your heat press, the one with the, uh, the heat press that had the 400 degrees when you pressed it from sublimation. Swing it over and just let it sit over it for about five minutes. You don't need to um, you don't need to close your press. Just let it sit on top of it so that that heat gets to the fabric and helps dries it a lot quicker. I promise it takes it only about five minutes doing that. And as you can see, with it completely dry. You don't see any stains um, or any residue left over from the um, from the fraying glue. So, okay, so we did that. Next, we need to next we need to go ahead and put on our adhesive. Okay, so we're going to go over to the other press for that because um, it requires a different temperature. Okay, we're over here at the heat press, and we're the next step is to put the adhesive on. Um, there's two different types of heat adhesive I suggest you can use. One you can purchase directly from Hobby Lobby or any of the craft stores. It's called the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. This was a roll of it for $10.99. Um, this stuff is pretty good, but it's not my number one choice. I actually discovered that using the adhesive from Caesar that you use for foil, uh, the, e the Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive is awesome it works great and i highly recommend this over the heat and bond um as you can see it's for foil application this one i got from coastal business supplies so you can go to their website and purchase purchase rolls of this for a reasonable price the instructions are 300 degrees um you preheat for two to three seconds uh, but what we're going to do is we will stick the adhesive for three to five seconds and then we'll do a full press over on the hat for 10 seconds. Okay, the next little tip I did, believe it or not, and you could do this out of your regular printer. I didn't have my regular printer here. Um, I just have my sub printer. So I stuck a piece of this in my printer just to print the, te the Texas outline. So I don't recommend this with your sub printer because then you're wasting sub inks, but for certain shapes like this, um, for certain shapes, I recommend printing it because then it makes it easier to cut out. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is follow the line here. Oops, and I don't wanna use those scissors. Those are my fabric scissors. <laughs> And I'm just going to cut this out. Doesn't have to be cut perfect. So you just, you're wanting a, an, a guide to stick on. 
and this just gives you the exact shape too if you're doing shapes like this that are obviously not square or round. If you're square or round you can just get your measurements of your square round patch and then do that. Oops. But for this, I wouldn't have wanted to hand draw it. It would have been a little complicated for me. All right, so let's see how it matches up. Okay, so this, this has a, a shiny glossy side and then it kind of has a matte side the matte side is the side that you're going to want to stick on first to the back of the patch oops and we should have printed it the other way uh -oh. well so i printed it in mirror view so i got to do it again real quick and not print it in mirror view all right so let's try this again Okay, so I went ahead and print and cut the um, the shape for the adhesive. And if you get any ink all over it, you can take alcohol and wipe the ink off before pressing, which is what I've done here. Um, the leftover ink after tracing and cutting. So now I have it cut, I have the shape cut correctly. And as you can see, it matches up pretty good. All right. If, all right, so the what, the next thing we need to do is we need to press this at the um, 300 degrees. So you want to have Teflon because you don't want it to stick. I do have a Teflon bottom on this heat press, but I'm going to go ahead and just use an extra Teflon sheet and kind of fold it over the way I do my uh, butcher paper. So again, you want to put the matte side down if you can see it i'm not sure if you guys can see that it looks like that you want to paste that down and you want this shiny papery feel to be face up because that's the protective paper there if you wanted to use a piece of heat tape to hold it in place you could do that i'm just going to Yes, and hold it back there. Make sure it didn't shift and it didn't. And we're gonna do a three second press. For 300 degrees, light pressure. Okay, see how it kind of sticks? So that's why you want to use your adhesive. All right. So now we are ready to stick it onto the hat. I totally love this patch, yay. It looks so cute. All right, so now we're ready to go over to the hat press and stick it on. All right, so we're over here at the hat press. I have the temperature set the same for 300 degrees and timer set for 10 seconds get you in here good so here's the hat that we're want I'm wanting to press this on I'm just gonna swing away our hat I am using my heat press nation signature black signature series hat press And because this is sub, you want a piece of paper. You're gonna need your butcher paper for your hat press as well because you don't want that ink, you don't want the ink going onto the top of the platen of your hat press. So now you just take off the adhesive protective film. And this is why I prefer this stuff because it is very strong. It, you actually have to work at taking it off just a tad. I think I got it. I 
think I got it all. Okay. So now you just place, place it on the hat and hopefully you guys can see me doing this. Now, if you want to take it onto the hat so you can ensure that it stays, that's fine, which I'm going to do because I want it to be directly in the center. Just a little bit of tape is all you need. Your butcher paper over. Now, try not to burn yourself. Uh oh, my bill's in the way. Alright. If your butcher paper falls out, just slide it back in. Give it medium pressure. And we're going to do the full 10 seconds. Careful taking the tape off of the hat if you use tape. It's so cute. Look at it. I love it. Now, if you want to fray up the edges, just pick around it because it might have gotten flattened. Just scratch at it is all I do. But as you can see, the patch is on there really well. And there you go. And there is your raggy hat patch. The no so method using sublimation. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video.